So today is uh, the topic on design of goods and services. So we'll discuss, it's actually more on products okay, or goods rather than services. So at the end of this uh, lesson, uh, I want you to be able to define product life cycle. What do you mean by product life cycle? Okay, every product have certain life from the newborn product until the you know decline and no more being used. Um, this is followed by the product development uh, system. Okay. So we need to, you need to understand a little bit about product development system, how products are being developed with regards to operations management or production management, okay, in, uh, in production management system. And then uh, explain how time-based competition is implemented by operations management. That means in order for us to, uh, to compete uh, in operations management, time-based, time okay, it's called time-based competition. Uh, whoever can, uh, whoever is able to deliver new products on time, they will win the market. Because it's competition, time. New product introduction is time. If you are late entry, competitor have already introduced product, then you are going to lose. Okay. And... Uh, and we want to look at how products are defined. Okay, basically, how do we define a product? And there are systems for defining products and services, especially in operations management or production management, because we want to make the products. So we want to have uh, documents, for example, document, document uh, for, uh, for production management. And uh, that is actually number four. Huh? So in uh, in uh, operations management, you need documents for production. That means it's not only uh, production uh, design, you cannot just design the product, but the, you must design the product with the document of how to make the product or how to deliver the service. They have service design, so you need to have document for that. And uh, we'll also look at how customer participates in the design and delivery of services. So in services, we need to understand customers' um, uh, requests, opinions, customers' uh, perception, then only we can deliver the service, okay? So customer, if the, the service uh, can meet the customer expectation, you know, then uh, you're going to, uh, you know, get more customers at the end of the day. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover. Um, the book gave an example of a company called Regal Marine. So a company called Regal Marine, which actually, if you see at the background here, so what are the products? What is What are they making? What are they making? Uh, shoe, shoe. What are they making? They're making boat. boats. Boats, yeah, boats. They're making luxury boats. Not luxury, but it's boats, okay? Boats. So how do they actually, if you see, this is a production line. One boat here, one boat here. There is worker here. So how do they actually, they must have to design this. Products, they have many products here. So it's a global market. They utilize technology basically. Okay. They use three dimensional computer aided design system, CAD. Maybe you have not heard of it. Have you heard of it before? Computer aided design system. What it does is it can reduce product development time. Okay, that's, that's why people use, uh, we call it CAD system. CAD, C-A-D is CAD. So it reduce problems with tooling, reduce problems in production. And it will also, uh, that is one of them. Okay, and they transfer that into assembly line production. 
So design and make sure that you can actually make it. So it's not only just design because in products, a good design can be a failure if you cannot make it. <laughs> if you cannot make the product, uh, assembly line production, how going to make it? And they use JIT, eh? just in time system for uh, making the, uh, the boats, okay? So their competitive advantage is uh, be able to um, deliver on time. So it's, uh, and of course other things, but, but they need a product. Any company need product. If you, how, how are you going to, you know, uh, there is, uh, so ex uh, organization exists to pro provide goods and services or uh, goods or services to society, okay? And great products are the key to success. Uh, you, can, you, have, you have seen many already. I've given example, you also have given example, Toyota, you know, BMW. And top organizations focus on core products. If their core competency is in engineering, automotive engineering, then they, you know, they will actually produce uh, their uh, automotive uh, products. And if it is uh, their strength is in sports car like Honda, uh, Honda, Honda sports, sporty, <laughs> Honda. So they they go for uh, sporty. But now Toyota also going for sporty uh, because trend, trend in the world is sporty, sporty cars. Okay. So top organization focus on core products and customers buy satisfaction, not just a physical goods or service. Do you agree? Do you understand this? Okay. They buy uh, satisfaction. They don't just buy physical product. The physical product, if it is not functioning, uh, nobody wants to buy, okay? And fundamental to any organization's strategy will uh, is important. Okay, product development. What what I'm trying to say here is, it is fundamental. That means goods and service selection is is basic. You must have, you know, uh, you must select your services, and that will you know make you survive or not, or you your operations can make it. Your operations can meet your, your strategies. Okay. So that is very fundamental. Uh, I repeat that already. And uh, goods and services are basis for organization existence. Limited and predictable life cycle requires. Okay, because life cycle, there is life cycle. For example, you know, have you seen typewriter? Do you know what typewriter was? Teruka, typewriter, mukashi, ne? Mukashi. Ma, ima arimasu ka? Mo nai yo, mo dead, shinde shimau. So, uh, floppy disk, uh, three three quarter inch ka, uh, three and a half inch ka, floppy disk. Now, now only use uh, flash. Right, flash, flash drive. Not, uh, I show you. Moti mas yo. Moti nai. So you know, product predictable life cycle, and you must companies must design and develop new products, new products. Okay, even all companies today, uh, every every car company want electric car. Electric car or uh, fuel cell car. So that is the future. Future is cell. Uh, so new products will generate revenue or income. You, you know, it will actually generate income. So this is a graph showing the, uh, the higher the percentage of sales from the last years, the more likely the firm is to be the leader. So industry leader, comes from new products, percent of sales from new products. That means you need innovation, innovate, innovate. Eh? So if it, for two, this is just a, you know, a, an idea, okay, that you need to 
So you need to develop new products. You need to have new, um, new designs. Or sometimes in car industry, in uh, they have cosmetic change. We call it cosmetic change. Only, uh, only outside change. Only skin change. But the same. The engine same. The interior same. But only the facial lift. Facial lift. Okay. Only skin change. Uh, maybe handphone also same. You know? Handphone. You have to understand. You have to actually understand whether it is only skin change or fundamental design change or new technology, totally new technology, right? So products um, actually covers tangible goods and service products. So product, when you say product, it also means service products. Okay, it also means service products. Some. Uh, tangible, some are. We have discussed this before. I think in, in the first week, second week, we have discussed this. Okay. Um, so, effective product strategy will link product decisions. Okay. Product decisions. So, we will look at what we mean by product decisions. Uh, so, it's product strategy with investment, market share. Product life cycle and product lines. Product lines mean, for example, you know, a car company will make sedan car, will make a compact car, will make a CRV or sports utility vehicle, SUV, make van, <laughs> make bus, make lorry, uh, trucks. So product lines. Or even uh, Samsung, Samsung very smart. Samsung makes a uh, telephone from cheap to very expensive. <laughs> Strategy is they cover all the market product lines. But iPhone only expensive. <laughs> iPhone only expensive. Only high end. So luxury market. All like BMW. BMW high market luxury because the the labor cost is very expensive <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> Germany labor very very expensive. Okay. Uh, anyway, because of their strategy, and of course, you know, it's uh, it, they make a lot of money. Of course, uh, you know, they they sell one BMW car. Uh, Toyota need to sell uh, maybe uh, four Toyota, <laughs> then they get the same same uh, revenue. Okay. But that those are you know companies strategy history and so on. So but but they have effective product strategy. So in operations management, uh, so this design of goods and services is what we say we are going to make decision on products. We need to make decision on products. So what is product decision? What do you mean? What do you mean by product decision? What do you think product decision is? I mean, the earlier slide I give some answer already before this the slide before this have given you some answers what is product decision what do you think product decision is hmm? for example you know uh, miho you have service products mm -hmm. for your clients mm -hmm. So, so how do you, what is your service product decision? How do you, how do you define that? How do you define your product decision? Marketing survey or ah, some okay. market from customers. So you, you provide marketing survey. Mm -hmm. Okay, other things? Enquête from uh, customers. You do improvement for the customers. Mm -hmm. You conduct business plan for the customers. And, and ask for some customers who ha have a uh, high uh, loyalty of company. High royalty company. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Um, some customer really like 
uh, the company and who, uh, who, who has been uh, who has been buying uh, cars for a long time. Uh -huh. Loyalty, you mean loyalty? Mm. Uh, loyalty, yes. loyalty cards. Okay, okay, right. Uh, so you, if you imagine, you know, you are uh, that is service product service. But for example, okay, uh, if I am Seven Eleven in Japan, okay, what is your product decision? Okay, sure. What is your product decision if you are Seven Eleven? in uh, japan what do you what what is actually product decision what is actually product decision uh, i think uh, first i should choose one product and uh, define it and the time uh, design so selection okay. uh, basically selection selection yeah. of uh, what to make actually what to produce so it is depend on the company's ability okay anyway the formal you know decision when you say product decision is actually the selection the definition and the design of your products or your services okay so how you're going to select which product to produce for example if you are uh, making onigiri eh? you make onigiri okay so i want to make what onigiri uh, where is uh, uh akiko <laughs> i cannot see you yeah <laughs> so yeah. i i want to make onigiri so so my mm -hmm. product decision how, how do you think product mm -hmm. decision for you know uh for maker of onigiri mm, the uh, like uh, what kind of the component of onigiri? Uh, what is the the flavor? Okay, do you want to a make flavor, a, yeah. a, a salmon onigiri or you want to make a, mm -hmm. a, a, what do you call tuna mayonnaise? Ka? Yeah, so that, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, yes. so if you come to Malaysia mm -hmm. and sell onigiri to Malaysian, Malaysian, you know, Malaysian mm -hmm. people like to eat uh, very uh, no spicy karai mono spicy. so uh, so you no. cannot make onigiri which is not spicy you must have ingredient which is a bit so sorry mm -hmm. wa uh, no. selection definition and design so that uh, it meets the market mm -hmm. nah? uh, uh, i see so that is uh, an example it's just example mm -hmm. So what is that is what product decision. But in operations management, we need to actually have this definition, uh, the objective of product decision. Okay, I'm just going to just show you eh, the objective of product decision because this is product decision. So we want to develop and implement a product strategy that will meet demand of the marketplace. So I mentioned just now marketplace marketplace can be uh, certain countries certain region us marketplace malaysian market with a competitive advantage so that is what we mean by the uh, you know uh, in operations management it is very important for uh, having a clear uh, product decision objective eh? right so these are product strategy options okay this, this you have learned already you have studied this you remember this differentiation, low cost, rapid response. Huh? You remember? Remember, right? We did this in strategy, right? In chapter two, there we have this uh, strategy. Differentiation means unique. I produce unique, different, low cost strategy, and also uh, rapid response. Okay, like Toyota. So we depend on these different product strategies then your product should be developed based on that. For example, you, you know, low cost. Taco Bell is actually a food, food chain in uh, US. McDonald's. McDonald's is also low cost. Yo. Low cost, eh? not a uh, high-end restaurant. <laughs> it's a, you know, not, not too low cost, but you know, middle. 
So different product strategies need to be uh, considered. And uh, this is from the book. I just took, took it and just want to show to you that. Uh, and then this will result into product innovation. Okay. If it is low cost, for example, technology. Technology is differentiation strategy. Samsung's uh, bendable, foldable. Okay, Samsung fold. You can you can find that in Malaysia. You can find that also. Okay, so that's technology differentiation, unique. Uh, so you, you you can see okay packaging uh, the way that uh, they have actually changed the packaging. Uh, so it is all these are product innovation can be driven by markets, technology and packaging. Whether it is designed focused on changes in the market, uh, which is, for example, the application of technology or a new container, the operations manager must uh, know that the, the creative process is ongoing with major production application. So any changes must be translated into operations. Operation must be able to do it basically if it is low cost, low cost. So low cost, I cannot make my, you know, for example, uh, product manufactured in uh, expensive uh, country. Low cost strategy, and you build your factory in Germany. Can you achieve low cost? No. Dekinai. So you go to China. Or you go to Vietnam, or you go to Malaysia, for example. Okay, if you want rapid response, like Toyota, you want to be fast. Then your development time must be very short. You must use a lot of technology, CAD CAM. You must use uh, rapid prototyping. So we'll see some of these technologies, uh, you know, later on. Eh? Okay, so that is the definition of you know product, uh, product, not not product, product decisions basically. Yeah. Now the next thing, next thing is product life cycle. Life cycle wa wakaruka life cycle. Sarah wakaruka life cycle. Life yes. Cycle. Ah okay. So life cycle. So products have life cycle. Product born, live and die. Same like human being. Okay, but but they don't have uh, they don't breathe <laughs> they don't uh, live like us now so it may be any length from a few days uh, the book says concert t-shirt yeah I agree okay some product just a few days you use it for a few days or months seasonal fashion you know your winter coat jacket is used for months eh? so that is uh, fashion winter fashion all product is used uh, for decades like boeing 737 or aeroplanes you know maybe more not only decade but maybe uh, 40 50 years okay then we, then it will change to a new model okay so that is product life cycle it must actually have so the operations function must be able to introduce the new product and produce the new product successfully. So from design, we'll see the product development uh, steps uh, later on eh, after this. So let me go a bit fast, okay? So that I can spend some time on the product development. Okay, there's a lot of things on the product development. Uh, so this is the product life cycle from introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. Obviously, you'll have negative cash flow initially because you invested a lot of money eh, for investment for new product development so you will only increase and this is you know as sales in revenue increase uh, you will see profit eh? so this we are looking at this four stages of product life cycle introduction growth maturity decline okay during the introduction phase you need to fine tune your product because product is still new there is some small problems okay uh, so that will require research product development process modification enhancement or develop new suppliers so introduction phase uh, required that so once you move 
finish your introduction phase. Now the product is already stable. Your growth phase. Your growth phase, the product design stabilized. And you need effective forecasting of capacity because if you do not have good forecasting, we studied forecasting before, before this, uh, earlier. If you have uh, you know, good forecasting and you know the capacity you can uh, determine, and then you know how much, how many to make. The problem is, if during the growth stage, you don't know the capacity, suddenly demand increase, you lose market. For example, new product, demand very high, you only can produce 100 one day. But demand is 200. So how are you going to make that? So growth, very important, the forecasting for capacity. It comes from demand. Okay. So adding or enhancing capacity may be needed during the, this uh, growth phase. Okay, growth phase. Uh, so many companies don't realize this, eh, how important it is to actually understand the, 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 the changes, eh, the changes. And especially if there are competitors, initially you are the only one making the product. Now, if there is competitor, then you have to actually know how many percent market share you hold, how many percent you share, hold, uh, okay? And we come to maturity phase, competitors now establish, uh, you have your, if you control high volume, okay? And uh, here, uh, enhancement and also improvement needed on production. Innovative production may be needed to actually maintain, they say, improve cost control. Because if you do not improve production, uh, reduce defects, your cost will increase. Okay? Or you may want to reduce the options. Options mean the different uh, product lines, the different vari variety of products at this phase. So, so imagine, you know, the, the company, successful company, continuously analyze the product's performance with the market. Okay, this product is no more, you know, uh, uh, demanded. The word is here, paring down. Paring down means to slow down or reduce or remove that product line. Remove the product line, meaning this product A, no more. Customer, very few demands. So why make it? So, but you must replace with a new, new product. <laughs> so that is the cycle. Eh? The cycle of new products, old products, mature, then you can, uh, you know, survive, survive in business. Uh, uh, not, not easy, not easy, you know. That is, uh, and you you reach a decline phase. Unless product makes a sort of special contribution, you must plan to terminate the product. Terminate. That's why Nokia failed. You know the story of Nokia. Nokia is a handphone brand name. You go and do study. Nokia, very famous. Nokia, N O K I A, very famous. But now Nokia, Arimaska, Nokia. Because they don't for, they don't change to Android. <laughs> the, the still operating system is uh, window based, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, they they stay window based. Uh, you know, not move to Android. Everybody move to Android, <laughs> so they they kill themselves. <laughs> they kill, they kill themselves. Some companies kill themselves because they don't want to follow the. Technological change, right? So let, let this move. Uh, let's move to the steps in general. Eh? In general, but I'm not going to teach you actually how to actually uh, you know uh, design new product because there's another subject <laughs> design. But this is just how how companies actually generate new products. It starts by understanding customer. 
Uh, so you do market survey. I think Miho, you mentioned just now, you can design uh, market test testing, uh, you know, market uh, survey. And of course, economic change. You need to create new products. Okay, economic change. Products for elderly people, old people. In Malaysia, still not many. But in advanced countries, you have uh, wheelchair, uh, electronic, uh, you know, electric wheelchair, um, can drive on the road. Uh, okay, so that those are old people product. But in Malaysia, not 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 coming. That is number three: sociological and demographic demographic changes, or technological change. You know, uh, now five um, G, Huawei have the technology. Okay, five G. Now five G very fast. Uh, I don't know how fast because I also don't. <laughs> So future maybe, uh, I don't know, we have a big screen and we can just uh, uh, stream as we go along. Okay, Political, legal change, all these are changes that you know will require us to generate new product. Market practice, professional standards, suppliers, distributors, okay, all these are requiring a new products. Eh? Okay, uh, what, it, what it means is that, uh, so that one, eh, number six. Eh? Uh, other changes that that is uh, brought by market active or even uh, requirements from uh, suppliers or distributors. So these are things which actually require us to actually generate new products. Okay. So how do we actually, what are the stages uh, for physical product Physical product, eh? physical product means you know tangible products. This is the general steps, general steps. Can you see here concept? We we'll always start with concept, and then feasibility, uh, finding out customer requirements. Then only you come into the design and engineering teams. Eh? Design and engineering, so this is very technical. Function, product specification, design review, test market, or even uh, doing the testing. Then only you introduce. This is not like marketing product development. I know in marketing also you study product development, <laughs> but, but this is not in marketing product. This is uh, physical product production oriented. Production oriented. So the scope of product development team is here. This is the scope of product development team from customer requirement. So in this team, maybe there is marketing officer here. Maybe there is a business uh, development department here. But here, no. This is design, engineers, uh, technical team. Okay. Right. So how do... I skip the QFD. QFD quality function deployment is uh, is just a tool. It's just a tool. It's not um, uh, you know not not widely used by all of you. Okay, you all are business people. <laughs> this the quality function deploy, uh, deployment is for technical. So how do people? How do companies organize for product development? Uh, traditionally, distinct department. That means it is only one department which actually who is responsible to actually develop the new product okay it can be marketing department trying to develop a new product and then you know pass the information give the information to engineering then they will develop this uh, okay distinct department but but it's not efficient okay it's not good traditionally just one or engineering department only engineering department you develop until a to z from concept until uh, what they call completion. You can use a champion. That means a champion is someone who drives the product through the product development system. He's you know, the project manager okay, or the, pro, uh, the designer. And uh, you know, it's, there is a champion, basically. One person, okay, product manager. Or you can use a team approach. Team approach is uh, representative from all departments will join up together, team, cross-functional, uh, R&D, 
design and then uh, QC, quality control, people from production, from marketing. Okay, so we call that the product development teams. Okay, or the design for manufacturability teams or the value engineering teams will look into value engineering. Okay, so this is a team approach. And another way that companies organize is actually using whole organization. Whole organization uh, is, is said to be uh, no, Japanese, Japanese whole organization approach. No organization division, everyone must be involved in new product development. No one left, everyone. So current product still make, but when it's a new product development, eh? maybe two, three years, you know, the, the team will be doing some take care of certain parts. Okay. So different companies will have different approach. Okay, different approaches. Just to mention here, okay, when we develop new product, uh, why, why we need to consider this? This is just a concept of um, trying to make sure it is actually um, can be made. For example, the word manufacturability means product that you design can be made. Manufacturability means activities that help improve product design, production, maintainability, and use. Okay, and these are the benefits. And also value engineering. Eh? Value engineering is also trying to find out whether your design is, you know, different design. You can achieve different design by, you know, uh, for, for, for meeting the function. Okay, for meeting the function. So which one gives us the best value? Best value means maybe it's cheaper. Same function, same function, but different uh, design, okay? Uh, for example, this. This is what is value engineering example. And it results into cost reduction. Now, this, this is the same, same function, same thing. This is a part. If you can imagine, you can, you can imagine this is a part, but here there is a screw here. Can you see this? This is this is actually a screw. This costs $3.50 because it's very complicated design. Complicated. The second design, same function, you do a welding here. Middle here is a welding. So you join this part A and part B. Okay, and this costs us. Two dollars. You can redesign this and two piece, one piece here, one piece here, and put a rivet here. Rivet, eighty cents. So which one you want to use? If you know, this is value engineering. Value engineering is a activity that actually help us to improve product design, manufacturability. Uh, how easy it is to make. This is much more easier to make. See, the third one, manufacturability. This, you need one, two, three, four parts. <coughs> of course, this, you need one, two, and three. This is one process, welding. Here, you eliminate the welding. You only need the rivet. So that's the concept of value, huh? value engineering. Have you seen this before? Kita, kita go to Aruka. Miho. Yeah, oh, okay. You, you have seen this because you're in industry. <laughs> yeah, you, you're in, 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 in uh, what do you call company. Eh? Okay. So, those are things, some of the things, very basic, okay, very basic about uh, manufacturability. And there are many other things, okay? issues for product design. Uh, you must have product, robust design, or the design is modular. You know, that modular means you combine many components and make it one rather than separate. You use computer aided design, computer aided manufacturing. And today, a lot of virtual reality technology. Do you know VR? VR. 
uh, VR technology is being used. I mean, young people, you know, uh, game, okay? <laughs> game, <laughs> like, uh, you know, in, um, very sad story in uh, US where, you know, one guy can shoot 10 people and die, right? That is VR camera. So that is so they were your wrong use of VR. <laughs> wrong use of VR. Okay. And value analysis is similar to value engineering. Value analysis is similar to value engineering. Eh? So I'm not going to, I'm just going to just show you, not, not de explain in detail. So you, you can read by yourself if you are interested because it's a bit technical. So robust design is uh, designed so that small variations in production. This will reduce cost because you ensure consistency, high quality. Eh? Japan use a lot of this robust design. Okay, Taguchi methods. Modular design, uh, product design is easily segmented components. Okay, it's very, you know, improved uh, productivity because you only have, for example, brake assembly module. You just, you know, assemble the brake assembly rather than all the small components. Computer aided design using computers to design products and prepare engineering documentation. Very fast because everything is on computer. The design, the drawings, engine drawings are there. And information design can be uh, deployed worldwide. Means if I have a design here, I can send through email to China the file and they can do the production in China. That's why today, no, no issue, okay? Because uh, you can, I can do the, uh, the design, computer edit design in Malaysia, the design, the program, and I can send the program to China. They can put into the uh, CNC machine, computer numerical control machine, and run the cutting, which is CAM, basically uh, computer aided manufacturing. Eh? Uh, extension of CAD is uh, DFMA, 3D modeling. So all these are technologies that is actually able um, to make things very fast. In China, they make house very fast. They've used RP, rapid prototyping. Concrete, <laughs> material is concrete. They can do rapid prototyping, RP. Okay. Well, the world is, uh, uh, CAD, uh, this is CAM, computer manufacturing and the benefits of CAD CAM and VR technology, uh, you know, value analysis. So all these are technologies available today. As operations manager, you need to know the basic. You don't need to know the details of the, you know, uh, design and so on. You know that, ah, uh, you see this, uh, this is CAM, computer aided manufacturing. Okay, uh, and also when we design, we'll talk, we'll also discuss this later on, eh? sustainability and life cycle assessment. So sustainability means you, you when you design a product, you, you must not, uh, today we'll talk about green product, eh? green products, product that actually meet the environment, doesn't destroy the environment. Okay, so without compromising the ability for future generation to meet their needs. So, so products, uh, they have life cycle assessment. It is a formal evaluation of the environmental impact of the new product. That's why today we have designed for this assemblability, you know, very easy to remove so that when the product life finish, you know, end of life requirement, end of life, you can dismantle. Uh, this is plastic, plastic parts, this is metal parts, and you can reuse. Uh, uh, circular economy. Have you heard the word circular economy? C I R C U L E R. Circular economy. You haven't heard that? Circular economy. Kita hmm. kutorka. Circular economy. 
So Sarah, you ask uh, Miho after this, what is circular economy? <laughs> Uh, green economy. So the product have life finished the first life cycle life. Now we uh, can be reused for the second life, third life, or recycled parts, plastics, recycled. Okay. Right. Mm. Uh, product life cycle are becoming shorter. Very fast today, everybody want to compete and the rate of the education is very, very is increasing. So you need to develop product faster because you want to uh, compete. Eh? So developing new product faster can result in competitive advantage. And so this concept is called time-based competition. Everyone is actually trying to produce the uh, faster, but to produce fast, how can we actually develop new product very fast? So there are many ways, okay? Uh, there's, there's two strategies. One is external, external uh, development strategy. You use alliances or you use JVs, joint ventures, or you purchase technology. You buy the technology or you, you know, buy the company. You buy the company, you get the technology. You know, Gili, 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 Gili. They own, they are the owner of Volvo. Volvo. You know Volvo? So they, when they buy Volvo, they get the Volvo safety technology. How to produce safe cars. So they, they acquire that. Okay. Uh, I think China is very aggressive in this. Very smart. Huh? I, I I have to tell you know if uh, you know the strategy is is uh, you know is uh, smart then uh, we to we have to acknowledge that they have a very fast automotive car development within uh, twenty years they are producing you know uh, good cars <laughs> and maybe another twenty years uh, same as Japan <laughs> car car industry car industry T today also already eh, U.S. South Korea. China, Japan are in the world, you know, automotive industry leaders eh? and Germany. Okay, so I was talking about development strategies, external and internal. Integral is actually migration of existing product. Migration means all model will be, you know, uh, be used. Some components will be used for the next generation, the next generation. Okay or you enhance existing products. This is a bit expensive. New internally developed products, a lot of uh, investment on, on R&D. You need innovation. Not all ideas become can be made. Eh? Man, we have many ideas, but, but maybe only one of 100 ideas become product. <laughs> Others, just ideas. ideas eh? Now, uh, so if you look here from external until internal, so, so, so there is a, this is a continuum. So continuum means the spectrum. So the cost of product development is going to be shared if it is external. So this is external. So going this way is internal. So cost of product development is actually internally. Uh, born, okay, that is uh, internally uh, spent cost. Speed, this is rapid and existing or existing, rapid. This is long because internal, new internal products, you know, you may have the innovation, you may have the new idea, okay. The risk of product development, this is shared between your joint venture or your alliances. And uh, you know the, the all the companies involved. For example, vaccine, eh? vaccine, COVID nineteen vaccine is alliance, global alliance on vaccine, Gavi. And also, have you heard of Gavi? You you can Google Gavi. You know, global alliance on vaccine. That that's why it's very fast, very rapid. COVID nineteen vaccine developed very fast because it's a shared shared risk. Or product development. Vaccine is, uh, you know, the COVID-19 vaccine is a, 
is a good example of very, uh, you know, very fast. Within one year, we have the vaccine. Or maybe they already have the vaccine, you know, it's, a, it's only strategy. <laughs> Some say it's a conspiracy, but uh, well, it depends on how you look at it. But here, if it is uh, internal development, the risk is actually high. The risk is high because you know you do not know the uh, the possibility of getting it right. Okay, so this is the you know the different um, elements that should be look in, look at. Right. Uh, so uh, the detail is this. Eh? Okay, the detail is that uh, if you buy technology by acquiring a firm, speed development. I mentioned just now, Gilly. Okay. But uh, the issue is fit between the organization and the, the product and the host. That means the, the new acquired company has their own system. So, but I like Gilly. Okay, Gilly doesn't change the brand name. Okay, they buy Volvo. They don't, they don't put Gilly. <laughs> Some companies they want to change and put their brand. <laughs> Even Proton also. Proton in Malaysia is now owned by Gilly. They don't change and put Gilly, they still keep Proton, but the car is actually Gilly car. <laughs> we know it's a, you know, so there's a, there's a fit between that. Eh? And JVs, uh, joint ventures, both organizations actually learn and the risk, risks are shared. Uh, you can use alliances, I mentioned just now already, cooperative agreement between independent organization and useful when technology is developing. Especially, you know, a good example is the COVID-19 vaccine product development okay the covid 19 product development through alliances because the technology is not that yet and it has reduced the risk and uh, well pfizer makes uh, tons of money today <laughs> if you understand what i'm saying <laughs> okay make tons of money okay shall we take a five minute break if you you know you're uh, Okay, we take a five. Go on, uh, ano, QK Shimashoka. Yeah. Any questions? Any, 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 anything that you like to? Uh, okay, we take a five minute break. Okay, and uh, you can drink your, take a coffee. Yeah. Okay, Sarah. Okay. Okay, five minute break. Right, so we'll, we are going to spend the rest of the time. Uh, I'm just going to quickly explain to you, you know, this, uh, some of these things. Some of them are actually quite technical. Eh? I'm not trying to make you a technical. I'm not, going, I'm not trying to make you an engineer, okay? I'm just trying to make you understand some technical things. Eh? So don't, don't, don't worry about it. But if you, you know, you, if at least you have heard about it, it's very important. Eh? So in production management, so once we have the um, design, okay, the stages and so on. So, so what is a product? So we need to define a product, especially when we talk about operations management. We want to make the product. So we need to actually have uh, some kind of reference. Eh? So the first definition is normally in terms of functions. What does the product uh, do? Okay. Uh, so, so once we know what the product do and how it's going to perform that function, so you need to develop uh, specifications during the design phase. And uh, during the design phase, you have the specification, but when the design is completed, you need to come up with the manufacturing uh, you know, process. How are you going to make it? So we need something which is called engineering drawing. Okay, engine drawing. And also we need bill of material. So bill of material will list the components of a product. So all products will have, it's like ingredient, right? You want to make a cake. So you have to have ingredients, you know, the same thing. So in a product, you must have, of course, the, if the product is much more complicated, then it's going to be much more uh, detailed. 
even for you know this uh, Monterey Jack cheese in US, it, this is the specifications. What is the grade, grade AA, what is the flavor, how is the flavor, the texture, the color, the finish, and so on. So this is code of federal regulation with regards to this product. Okay, even food product has specification. What more physical products? Okay, things which are required to function. Okay, so we uh, we have engineering drawing which actually show the dimension, tolerance, and material. Uh, in some cases, if you use group technology, you will show the coding for the uh, parts in that drawing. You have the bill of material. Bill of material is list component quantities when were used. You know, uh, we will come again and we will see this bill of material again uh, in, uh, in coming chapters, actually. Uh, and it's actually showing product structure, right? So this is an example of an engineering drawing. It's just one, uh, one, one part. One, you know, it is a drive roller. Okay, it's a drive roller. It's a full scale. Who draws it? And these are information about you know, the the sizing, the tolerance. Okay, so so we make based on drawings. Okay, so from from small components until you know big things. Build a material for. A panel, some kind of panel, panel weldment. So this is the number of the uh, the number for these parts. Every part will have number, the description and the quantity which is required to actually make this uh, panel. Okay, so it's called bill of material, or in short, it's called bomb. Not the bomb bomb. Eh? It's uh, actually bomb. <laughs> it's B O M bomb. Okay, when when uh, in production management, when we say bomb, then you know it's built on material. This is for physical product. That's why I said you know for hamburger, for example, in McDonald's, they have built on material for you know hamburger or this is including French fries. Okay, never mind. So they they have you know a description of. I'm sorry, I keep on run, running this uh, red. <laughs> Red uh, highlighter, Hard Rock Cafe, Hickory Barbecue Bacon Cheeseburger. Okay, so this is the bomb, right? Uh, so to, to make this, you have to follow this. Uh, uh, the disc but it doesn't say the steps yet. It's just the material. It's only the material. There are many other documents that actually needed for production. Because from that mill of material, you can use uh, assembly drawing, you can use assembly chart, you can uh, there you produce a route sheet, okay, or you produce a work order, and if there are changes, you have to produce engineering change notice. So these are documents for production. You cannot make uh, a product unless we have some reference. Why is it important? Because if you don't have this, how are you going to make it? How will you know these components is going to be assembled? So this is, for example, this is assembly drawing. It will show the exploded view of product. Okay, if you are an engineer, I think you can understand this. This is actually exploded. So if you join them together, it's actually one assembly. Okay, and it details the relative location to show how to assemble the product okay this three eight inch hexagonal head bolt must go through this now if you have bought materials from uh, diy uh, shops have you ever bought uh, you know like a bookshelf you know where you have to assemble yourself so same thing okay assembly drawing and this is assembly chart no no don't worry about it this is no, the engineers will do it for you. <laughs> but, but if you work in a company, then you have to understand. Uh, it identify the point of production where components flow into sub-assemblies. So this is the left bracket assembly. This is the right bracket assembly. So how you read this is actually at this. One and two and three join up together to become SA1. 
uh, four, five, six join up together to form SA2. SA1 and SA2, okay, it become A1 and it will join with SA2 to become A2. Okay, then it will flow down here. Then the seven, eight, nine is A3. So after it become A3 sub-assembly, it will be inspected. Poka UK inspection is being done on A3. And you put the part tag, you put the white, uh, box with packing material. So this is assembly chart. Okay. To explain it a little bit more detail. Lah. Okay. It's, it's logic, logic. It's a logic chart. <laughs> Nothing fancy. <laughs> Not muzukashi, no? this is a logic chart. Yoko, I know, you easily can understand. No? Or route sheet. Route sheet is actually process steps, machines, operation, and the time to set up and operation time. So it lists operation and times required to produce a component. This is work order. To, this is an instruction to produce a given quantity for a certain time. So this is you know, and uh, if there are changes, we call it uh, configuration management because things change. Okay, things change. If, when things change, you need to record down. We cannot use uh, if the drawing have new drawing, new material, so that is updated, updated. So we call it engineering change notice. Huh? Uh, Right. Another important element in production is actually the PLM, Product Lifecycle Management, where it is an integrated software and it's, uh, it's like a record. Eh? It, it records the product design, the CAD CAM, the routing and so on. So it is um, integrated software that brings together all elements of product design and manufacture. Integrated product design and manufacture uh, document eh? is in a, in a software electronic right so that finished me product <laughs> product nanika shisumon ga arimasu ka product or uh, maybe maybe you know uh, mitokoto ka nani kore wakaru ka Can you hear? This is clay model. Clay model means you, before you come up with a real car, you use clay, earth, to actually come up with the concept. Okay? So this is a Mercedes. Mercedes, uh, nani. Clay model, uh, so this is part of design, right? okay, design of uh, the first step in uh, car development, so the new product development steps, you can see how ideas, they try to translate that into, you know, like a sample car, you know, sample car. Almost like real, but it's not. You cannot drive the car because it's a, it is a, it's a model car. It's a model car, Mercedes. So that is what that is. The process is called clay model, clay modeling. Okay, so that's one of the process in uh, you know uh, making cars. You can Google and see, but of course, if you Google, you need to have some basic understanding of what what it is about okay have you seen this before clay model okay this is uh, you know there are many interesting things in uh, engineering very very interesting things <laughs> making no products right uh ah, so, okay i i i show you this 
This is... My name is Shadal Alam. I'm a designer here at EV Squared. Lexus. Um, I'm also a recent graduate of transport design from Coventry University. And upon graduation, I've been working here for the... He's a designer. He's a designer. But he's not engineering. He's an art designer. But he will... I'm going to show you how we drew the LFSA. Just a bit of detail, the processes that were involved. What we're doing here is essentially basically getting the foundations in. So as you can see, what I'm working on now is getting the perspective, just trying to quickly draft it out. I'm trying to determine the proportions of the car, and the stance, and what I'm starting with is essentially the wheels. Let me I guess. It's important to have something unique in the sense of expression of style. So as you can see, I'm working with pencil here of the car, just so the shape is much more evident. And also, as it's a Lexus, it's very important to get the spindle grill in, which is a key signature at the moment for any Lexus you're working on. It's always important to ensure that you've, you're just free, because sometimes when you start restricting yourself, that's when you realise it's, it's becoming too normal. At the end, you would put the logo in, just to give it the, the Lexus feel. Once you're confident with your general drawing, it's important to get the highlights right, the, the shadows right, and then that way the car itself will start to speak. So I've now scanned in the sketch and we work to develop it in order for it to become a real car. This is using computer. The professional environments are always racing against time. Now he's so translating what I'm trying to define the now is the crucial lines. Design is really important in the sense that it kind of shapes the future to some extent. I mean, not just aesthetically, but from a design point of view, we're able to sort of capture or understand where the needs are, what people are expecting. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the beauty is you're actually working to create a product that not only fills a need, but also helps enrich the lives of other people, whether or not they know it. From our point of view, we feel that sometimes whenever you see something, you might not always like it, but when you do, you don't always know why. And these intriguing questions are things that we always look forward to answering. Um, so I think from that point Lexus, of view, yeah. design is pretty important. It might be something that's considered not as important as it should be, but uh, it really does drive the future. Well, this is also making the model, okay? The prototype model. Do omoi maska, minasan, kanji, meho san. Anika, emotion. Very impressed. <laughs> very impressed. Okay, very impressive. Yeah. First time you see this? Or you have seen this before? No? Eh? Uh, sure. What do you think? You think easy to make car? <laughs> no, it's very difficult. <laughs> but but beautiful, right? The the designer. Yes. Actually, you know, he's very uh, creative and talented, you know, to actually, but he's trained, he's trained as a designer. You go to university and learn how to actually, you know, become a designer. Uh, Sarah, do omoi maska? Um, actually, um, two, maybe two months ago, one of the famous Korean car company, maybe it's Hyundai, Hyundai, uh, uh -huh, Hyundai. Hyundai, you know, uh, Hyundai, yeah. Hyundai. Mm. Um, the desire, the car designer died because of the overwork. Oh, so the God. car. So I feel so um, sad. Has, yeah, so sad <laughs> after so watching God. this. I, I, I. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but 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 uh, you know, you can see how difficult the work is, but it's beautiful. You know, sometimes. Yeah, indeed. I just, you know, I actually, what does she want I know I have a Lexus actually. I drive a Lexus, but the the low version uh, E250, very nice car. Lexus is a very nice car. 
Very nice. Hmm. Okay, so product design. Why I buy Lexus? Because number one, quality Ichiban. <laughs> number one, quality. Uh, you can check in the internet. Okay. Now let me finish a few things. Uh, okay. Uh, service design. Okay, service design is. Uh, I have about like twenty minutes. Okay. So service typically include direct interaction with the customer. So, but still it must be designed, like you know bankings or even uh, you know retail shops. You, I will show you, you know, Uniqlo um, checkout counter after this. So the the normally we'll we we'll do this analysis. Process, chain, network analysis. So PCN analysis focus on the way in which processes can be designed so that you optimize interaction between uh, you know, the firms or the companies and the customers. That means customers come in and we actually look at their interaction. So there is an example here. It is, this is PCN analysis. All these are terms, okay? Terms like independent processing. This is the sandwich supplier, supplier's domain process. This is uh, consumer uh, do process domain. Sorry, this is supplier process domain. This is the consumer process domain, okay? Uh, if, you know, uh, it is, uh, you, pre you prepare sandwich at factory for resale at convenience store, independent processing. And this is the surrogate interaction and you, where you make sandwich in restaurant kitchen from menu offering with modest modification, not much changes that you can do. So this is surrogate inter uh, interaction. Uh, when there is, uh, you, when you assemble cus uh, custom sandwich at Subway as customer order, so this is direct interaction, okay? Direct interaction. So the, uh, you know, it become, uh, uh, the need to actually understand this, the, this interaction, okay? Uh, if it is consumer, so this is consumer side, this is supplier side. Eh? Uh, so this is called the uh, surrogate interaction of customer which assemble sandwich from, from different, uh, you know, buffet offerings, okay? And if it is at home, of course, it is your own. Eh? You assemble according to whatever ingredients that you have in the uh, operator, uh, refrigerator. Eh? So, so how we explain this? Eh? So direct interaction region include process steps that involve interaction between participants. So this is when we, we, we this region, the direct interaction is actually uh, required to understand what customer actually uh, wants. Okay, so direct interaction required. The surrogate or the substitute interaction region will include process steps in which one participant is acting on another participant resources. And the independent processing region includes steps in which the supplier or the customer is acting on resources where each has maximum control. For example, this is where the supplier has maximum control. What to put, you know, what is the ingredient and so on. So this is uh, supplier side independent processing. Here, okay is the let me just get this for this part independent processing but it is at the consumer process domain okay so so what where are we i mean uh, if you are just here then you you know the your interaction with customer is less but here your customer interaction is the highest okay where you actually uh, ask the customer what actually they want. Here, you don't ask the customer. You can make whatever you want and you can sell it. Okay. Any, any question? So this is the uh, so-called the surrogate interaction region at supplier side or at customer side or consumer side. This is the independent processing region at the supplier or the customer side. Okay. So, this is, so you need to analyze where we are, where the... Uh, so all three regions have similar operating issues, but the main way of handling issues differ across regions. So service operation exists only within the area of direct and surrogate interaction. That means 
you uh, these three these three places uh, basically surrogate interrogation at supplier side this is surrogate interaction at consumer side or the direct interaction okay direct interaction it is balanced between supplier and consumer okay right uh, service operation exists only within the area of direct and piece analysis will actually provide insights to help us position and design processes that can achieve strategic objective where is your strategic objective is it your product is here uh, then you know you need to actually make sure that the uh, the you know uh, modifications can be allowed to be done by the uh, supplier okay or oh, this is really if it is consumer side the variety here so here the variety is maximum right this is you know consumer side the variety the differences of uh, selection here uh, selection because it's at the consumer side here limited so it depends on your strategy subway is here have you been to subway subway or delis delis uh, you know sandwich in japan there is deli is it they call it or I forgot the name, but it's only like uh, it's here actually. It's uh, I want tuna sandwich, but it is already decided what is inside there. So you only get <laughs> this is at the supplier's uh, you know decision, not at consumer decision. Eh? Consumer decision is uh, buffet here, buffet offerings, buffet, eh? buffet. Okay, so you have to do this analysis where. Where is your strategy? Where is your uh, what do you call product eh? or your service? Sorry, uh, right? So you have to do the analysis to achieve your strategy objectives. So how do service achieve efficiency? How do you add service efficiency? Because service productivity and efficiency is actually very very low, very difficult because of customer uh, involvement. Uh, in the design or delivery of service or both. Service is very difficult eh? and it also complicates product design. For example, in the subway, you have to wait for, uh, for the first customer to actually be completed before you go for your big order. Eh? Your order is taken after you know, the first. But if you go to subway, you, do you know subway? Subway uh, sandwich is there in Japan? Subway? Uh, even the selection is not many. It's just uh, very few <laughs> selection. Not, not shuriwa, uh, sukunayo. Maybe five, six only. Not twenty. Eh? Not sorry. Not twenty, thirty. No. Okay. And still low, slow, slow, slow. Service efficiency. Okay. And if you increase the variety, it will complicate your product design and also reduce your efficiency. So how do you do that? So you limit the options, like Subway, limit the options, <laughs> limit the options. This will improve efficiency. Or you delay customization. Delay customization is that, you know, they, uh, that's why they select which bread first, Subway, and let's say Subway. Topping or even the sauce, last, and they don't put the sauce first, it's last. So they delay the customization, delay later, you know, you actually uh, request that customization it, because individual one different source. So you put it later, eh? final, final step. Or you modularize. Modularize means you actually uh, uh, only allow certain uh, combination eh? uh, so that you actually customize the service. Eh? This is being done in... Uh, uh, what do you call in, uh, investment uh, education uh, modular you know uh, so that you you will actually improve their efficiency automation okay this is being lot uh, being done a lot today especially after covid automation a lot of uh, you know and uh, another important uh, aspect in uh, service efficiency efficiency and um, you know satisfaction service satisfaction is the uh, concept called moment of truth. Moment of truth is the the you know the point in time in which customer is actually satisfied or not. So very very simple. The moment of truth is whether he is 
you know, getting his service what he wanted. Okay, so it is a critical moment between the customer and the company that determine the customer satisfaction. So if it is not satisfied, he will actually uh, probably, uh, you know, say, I'm not going to come to this coffee shop anymore because your coffee is too nani nani, <laughs> okay, or your taste is to uh, take or you know the coffee is cold uh, so sorry what moment of truth <laughs> moment of truth okay so that is uh, something that must be considered eh? right um many many places can you have you experienced some moment of truth wakaruka moment of truth sarah moment of truth have you experienced in service any moment of truth Can you give one experience or one example in which, you know, uh, service, service, restaurants, hotels, you know, McDonald's, Joko <laughs> Demo, Aru Yo. Anyone or, or, or Akiko or anyone, anyone, any, any, uh, any experience? Moment of truth. Huh? You wanted to say something, Sarah. What what you want to say, Sarah? <laughs> well, any any uh, example? Do you understand this concept? Moment of truth? Do you understand the concept? You don't understand the concept? The concept is like this. It is a moment in time, one point in time, in which when you get the service and you either satisfied or not satisfied. You know, for example, I go to a hotel and uh, I check into the room. The room is not clean, not yet clean up. I enter, not yet clean up. How you feel? Happy. You happy? Do you have, feel happy, Sarah? Disappointing. Huh? Disappointing. Disappointing. But if I if I tell you that my experience is that. It was uh, disappointing. I went to the desk and he apologized. Wait a minute. He upgraded me to excellent room. <laughs> no charge extra. How you feel, Sarah? Happy. <laughs> Happy. Sorry, what? Moment of truth, man. I that see. Is critical moment between the customer and the organization that determine customer satisfaction because the the hotel has a good customer recovery process customer recovery eh yeah? hmm. miho nanika arimasu ka sometimes customer is angry uh huh. <laughs> no satisfaction. Why you you can't give us the uh, certification or something? It's uh -huh. really late. <laughs> oh, late certification. Mm -hmm. oh. Got angry and uh, I say I'm sorry, but uh, another company didn't give us a uh, certification. Sorry and so blah blah blah. And then customer. Uh, Understand. Suddenly, change, change their mind. mind. So he understand, not because of you, not because of your company, but because of some other. So yeah, okay, okay, yes, yes. That will make the customer um, understand. You explain why. Okay. Ah, huh, Akiko, you are in university. <laughs> oh yes, I'm in university. Yes. So any student mm. uh, get angry with you? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh? mm, yes. Any so sometimes. Mm. We, mm, but but in the university, mm, I don't know the example moment of truth because there there are no free something in the university. 
No, no complaints lah. No complaints. So, no complaints, you don't know lah. Okay. Anyway, this is example. Okay. Just example of, you know. So, service so organization must be careful of this. No, because uh, customer will run away. Run away means they don't want to do business with you anymore. Okay. Right. So, so these are things which will improve efficiency as well. In order for us, for services to have high, because it's a high level of interaction. So you need also documentation. Okay. And sometimes it's actually job instructions or even scripts, storyboards, uh, techniques that were used for documents. Tatoi bane. For example, you know call center. Call center, if I have a problem, I call the, you know, the call centers. Credit card, for example. Credit card cannot use. Or banking issues, so you call. You know, my daughter have worked before in uh, Citibank. Citibank is a uh, credit card. So my daughter said, any issue, there are all standard answers. <laughs> None demo. FAQ, yeah. Frequently asked question. FAQ. FAQ. So storyboard and script. Script. For example, uh, I want to go overseas. Can you activate my card for me to travel overseas? For me to use the credit card overseas? Yes, sir. We can. What is your number and so on? So with there is a, there is a script. There is a steps. There is a guideline. So, for example, this bank, drive up teller, this is a survey guideline. Provide written session for customers who must reform, mark line. Always say please and thank you when speaking through the microphone, establish eye contact. This is a service guideline. You know, to go to McDonald's, they will say very standard Good morning. What is your order? <laughs> thank you. Please, uh, when you already enter shop, you know, they will say, Russia must say, must say, standard, all shops will say that. Say, same, uh, you know, service, very, you know, just very polite, okay, very standard. Eh? So, service also need some kind of documents or scripts or storyboards. Storyboard, eh? storyboard means, uh, you know, situation, how to answer. Situation, how to answer, how to respond. Okay. So that is very important eh, for, you know, uh, service design. I found this in the in, uh, internet. Okay. They call it a uh, customer journey mapping, whereby for different stage, what's your touch point? Okay. And then the customer process experience. Okay. Uh, correct taxane today. Many, many experience. Uh, for example, booking.com or Agoda, hotel. Experience, uh, smile, no smile, sad. Only three, <laughs> only three. Smile, no smile, or sad. So if you go hotel, your uh, what they call feedback, feedback was uh, no smile. <laughs> okay, so today is used a lot. Okay. Uh, there is also another way, which, which is actually called blueprint. Eh? Maybe we have time. I'll, I will show you this as well. Okay, uh, blueprint for overnight hotel stay. So this is uh, physical evidence, customer actions, uh, visible contact uh, or on stage eh, with the employee actions. This is behind the stage, by backstage support processes. Okay, so people, we must know the process, okay, so that we can actually know if things go wrong, where to do, what to do, okay. So this is called blueprint, service blueprint. Before you go, okay, I think this is the last slide. Let me just, okay, last slide. Uh, before you go, I have this, uh, okay, and all of you know this already. So we have our vending machines and low. cool gadgets in Japan playlist. In Japan, here's another one. Ah, uh, okay. You just put your basket Unique low. Of this automation, right? There. 
automation in uh, there uh, and re- reads retailing your QR code on your smartphone and this system knows exactly what's in that basket so I found so out we that we couldn't work it out we go back to the car and we had a look at the label uh-huh. and, and it said IC chip and IC chip ah, where's the IC actually, chip actually there is IC chip here in the cardboard now I know because it's IC just chip just a inside. thin little strip inside <laughs> the cardboard label. that Previously, identifies I don't that particular know how, garment but now I know so you don't have to do anything special you just chip. leave everything bundled in your basket drop your there, basket into that the, spot the price tag and it just then it reads can read exactly what's in that basket, you put, you can puts read. it up on the screen and says, is this all correct? Uh, and you just say yes, because of course it is. So that is technology. And charge your, your charge system through your phone there. And yeah, you please do that. By, yeah. Ding, ding. You can do cash if you want to. Yeah. There's a cash system there as well. Yeah. Prints so out your receipt. So there are Ichiban, uh, Malaysia. I don't know. Mada, Mada Arimasen. No, it's not. Ikimasu. Pick up your phone, pick oh, up your okay. basket. Right. Any questions? It's already 6, almost uh, 6.40. Uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, I, I think I will just uh, stop the recording first. Okay.